What up guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Blair White, for those of you who are new, and we're talking about some explicit stuff today, in case you didn't know. So first of all, I am sick today. If you hear it in my voice, that's why. A actually really shitty person got me sick. Someone who I regret hanging out with. So today's video is a topic that I have really avoided talking about for years. My, my entire channel, as long as you guys have known me, I have avoided talking about this topic beyond little tidbits here and there and little things for you guys to read between the lines about there. You guys know that I have been super open about surgeries that I've had. I've done videos chronicling them. Um, you guys know I had my face done in 2017. I had my breasts done on the same day as my face, which was very traumatic. And I do not advise doing them both at once. But one of the things I get messages and comments and emails about every single day and have always since the beginning of my channel is uh, quite a personal and invasive question. And I guess that I wasn't necessarily ready to invite all of the potential judgment from talking about this, but I really just don't even care now. So the question that I get constantly is, Blair, what do you have down there? Have you had the surgery? Have you had the big snip? But I have not had gender reassignment surgery. And I'm gonna talk about why I don't plan on having a gender reassignment surgery anytime in the near future. And I think this is an important topic beyond me just talking about what I have down there. I think it's something that a lot of trans people don't wanna talk about. It's something the trans community um, sees as a huge taboo. So the first is an extremely important one to me and it's very taboo to talk about, but the rates of depression and worse, and you know what I mean by worse, I'm not even gonna say it because I'll get demonetized, are actually extremely high post-op. So after people have that surgery, it's actually very common for them to have a very, very deep depression, one that leads them to doing things that are obviously unspeakable. And that has someone like me, who is obviously a potential candidate for having this done, very worrisome. You know, I like to go into everything armed with as much information as possible because I never want to go into anything blind, especially something like this. It's like, once you do that, you're not going back. Like, sorry, like all this talk of detransitioning or whatever, you can't fix that if you change it up once. It's one and done. And there are a lot of studies you can read online that back this information up. So then I think to myself, okay, then maybe the truth is that a lot of trans people see the surgery, the big one, the big snip as sort of like a fix to their life. They make it the biggest goal in their life. Like they have this incredible build up to it that they're waiting their whole lives for it. And then when they get it, they realize, oh, rent is still due. I'm still dealing with this bad relationship. I still have these issues with my family. I still don't have a career going for myself. I think that People put so much emphasis on it as if it's going to fix their life when in reality, it's not going to. And this is by absolute no means saying that the surgery cannot make someone happy. I mean, I'm proof that the surgeries that I have gotten in my transition have made me extremely happy and I don't regret them at all. But with this surgery in particular, the one down there, there seems to be this like prolonged lasting depression that happens afterwards. And that's something that's quite scary to me because I did fall into a short post-surgery depression for my other surgeries and I can't imagine it being worse than that. So the next reason is a very practical one, the cost. <laughs> it is like 30 grand to get this surgery done by someone who's actually good at it. It's extremely expensive and I really could not justify not putting that money into a roof over my head, into a college fund for my future children, providing for my fiance, or just having it for a rainy day. The other reason that I feel like people don't really talk about is the complications and the risks and the aftercare of this surgery, which I don't think anyone doubts that this surgery is like an intense surgery, an extreme surgery. I mean, you're dealing with that area. It's an incredibly sensitive area. But I also think that a lot of people very much underestimate how intense it is. So a lot of people think that it's a big snip. I even jokingly call it that. Um, you're not actually cutting anything off, you're not removing anything, you're actually reusing the tissue, organizing things, and you're basically turning it inside out to create a cavity which looks like a vajayjay. Now I have seen quite a few of these vajayjays in real life and on the internet post-op, um, and I have to say it is about 50-50. I have seen some that look impeccable, some that look real, some that look awesome, and I have seen some that do not. I would say half look great and half look really gross. And think about if you've ever had any type of wound on your body, Your what your body does is attempt to close it. Like that's what your body is trained to do, that is what your body does to help you. So after this surgery, your body is fighting to close off this new foreign cavity that suddenly 
there. So to stop it from doing that, much like you know a piercing or a body modification of another sort, you have to keep it open. I'm trying to keep my monetization here, but basically what you use is that little thing that housewives keep in their drawer next to their bed for when their husbands are not home, and you have to use one of those on yourself for up to a year every single day. I don't know who the hell has up to a year of downtime after surgery, but I do not. And then the surgery is often a very complication, risky surgery. So there are a lot of really crazy complications that can happen. People have had their urethras close up. People have been unable to pee. People have lost their pleasuratory sensations when they're making love. Like there is just a lot to it. And I think people treat it, especially the media and trans people treat it as like this like quick fix and it's going to change everything and you're going to be good afterwards. And, you know, that's just not always how it is. And uh, it's something to think about. And it's something that I've thought about. So what you're probably asking is, Blair, if you're trans, wouldn't you want to get the surgery even with the risks, even with the pain, even with the everything? And the answer is no. So if you research gender dysphoria, which trans people have, real trans people have, um, you will learn that people have varying levels of dysphoria and dysphoria towards certain things. What always brought me the most dysphoria before I transitioned was walking down the street, going places, and feeling like people read me as male. So that involved my face, that involved the fact that I was very flat chested, and those are two things that I fixed through surgery. And after that, all that dysphoria basically went away. Like it's just, it's gone. The other thing is that I am at such a good place with my transition in my life and it's not really something that I think about too often. Like I am happy with my body and how I look. I'm in a relationship with someone who's happy with my body and it's just not something that I am in a rush to do. Like it's just not. Why would I try to fix something that at least at the moment is not broke? Like. All right, guys, I think that is it for this very personal video. I hope you liked it. I hope you learned from it. I hope I answered some questions about myself that you may have had so you can stop blowing up my comments and my messages. And a quick reminder, I am currently trying to hit 200K on my Instagram, so please follow me on Instagram. It's the best way to keep up with me, and uh, yeah, just do it. If you like this video, hit me with a comment. Tell me what you think. I read every single freaking comment true story consider being a member to this channel you guys get exclusive videos as a member to the blair white channel these videos are usually very long like an hour long i like to give you guys a lot of content but until next time i love you guys i'll see you in the next video